working on my own car today and this is an E61 2005. It's the very first year in September 2005 that they started to make these devices look sort of separate. E90s and stuff like that, you generally have to replace the whole column. And what's been happening is I've been getting the yellow CC message for uh, steering lock and the fault codes are critical state as well. There's many things can cause that, but I've got a, quite a good battery on it and the main battery cable was replaced at the BMW dealer for free under warranty. So I can exclude pretty much most of them. And the JBE doesn't have one, it has KGM, general module. And uh, it has a built-in terminal 30GF relay on that. So really, can I say there's a relay problem? I hope not, I don't think so. It basically works uh, straight from the cast does this. There's not many wires, I think there's four or five wires on it. But uh, I just took this off and the shear bolts weren't even tight. Which they just literally, I've not even hammered them, they just fell out then. I'm thinking, God almighty, you know, I've just spent 300 euro on this new lock. Was it only that? But I don't think it was really. Um, yeah, I mean, I could be wrong, but they weren't like loose, loose, but you know, quite loose. But then again, I, I took the lock off and the casing fell off. And generally the casing is very difficult to take off. So I think someone's been tampering with this in the past. And I think the plastic motor here sometimes is going faulty and it's just not working. Well, I just thought I'd do a little video and show how the system works because it's quite interesting actually. So the key's off there now and I have to be careful because the casings have to keep it pressed. So as you can see, it's armed so the plunger is inside. There we go. So now that's sort of the keys out. So that would then lock in your steering column. Now it's only spring loaded. It doesn't lock like a conventional lock. You can push it in, but of course when it's bolted up like this, you're not going to be able to push it at all, are you? So it's a pretty good device. But it worries me because two problems with this. First of all, even if you could take this off, if the circuit board and the circuitry doesn't send a telegram message, I don't mean social media app, I mean a telegram message to the CAS, it won't allow the engine start. So not only can the lock fail but you can have an issue with the circuit board or the wiring in between well thanks for the wiring it's so so big and i hope that's all right the fault is intermittent it's been doing it random and if you want to see how it works it's a pretty cool device actually it's i've got to keep it pushed in or it'll all fall apart on me you can kind of see how the system works there So if you want to know how it works, that's basically how it works. It's pretty cool. And we'll put it on the bench and have a, a better look. I'm trying to make it fail, but, it's, but it does feel very notchy and very lumpy and I don't like it. So there now, look. There's a distinct difference in the note of the motor and I wonder if the motor's getting tired. There you are, it's failed. It started to fail then. No check message, but still. Yeah, it's definitely... Well, yeah, it's definitely faulty that. There's something going on with that. Still no check control message, but it's very random. I hope the new one, that check control message is just a PDC, part distance control. So we'll put the new one on and see if it's any different. I hope it is. Anyway. We've got several are. items here. We've got the new lock door, which cost me 330 euro, I think. And we've got the old one, and this is the lid. And the lid came off really easy, which surprised me. And it started to make me think, well, something a bit dodgy going on there kind of thing. And this is something a colleague gave me. It's an emulator. Now, I don't really like these emulators. I mean, if you're in the, in sort of in trouble and you need to not, you don't have the money, you can get these for like 20 euro, if not less. But it's Chinese and, you know, does it work? Probably it does work. They just capture the signal and then it emulates it. And it, you know, you don't have a lock at all. You could take the lock off. Two problems with that. First of all, someone could actually steer the car if they wanted to steal it and take it on a trail or whatever push it out of a parking space and tow it away really. So a steering lock does give you a bit of security and in the UK when I lived there of course, you really do need that because I had a car stolen that way once, towed away. So anything that helps thieves 
not steal your car is good. So this for me was just not an option, even though I could have tried this and maybe it would be okay. I opted to actually buy a new unit. I hope it's, you know, gonna fix the problem kind of thing. Um, but really the system itself is, is quite straightforward in a sense. Uh, I mean, if you pull this out now, probably it's gonna not go back together. <laughs> You've got that's just spring loaded all the time. It only goes one way, it's got a stopper on it. Um, some type of stopper device. And this itself could be the issue, but when I look at it, it does look a bit dodgy. And for some reason, which I find really bizarre. Ah, that's it, yeah. So the new one seems to have some rubber stopper here. And this one's worn, you see. Now, it don't really do much because it just fits in a groove like this. And it rotates the steering column, then there's a groove what that just locks into kind of thing. And there's a few teeth, but I mean, it is visually worn. Maybe that's an issue, who knows? Because the new one sure as hell isn't. The new one looks a bit better in my eyes. Or could it be something that someone's... No, it's got one, it's got like a skid plate or something, like a buffer. But this unit is, it seems quite tricky. It doesn't seem like you can open that casing so easy. And the fact that the other one was loose. It just fell off literally. I mean, the shear bolts literally just fell out in my hands. So, I'm not really, I'm not really keen on this. I think there's, someone's been tampering with this at some point. But having said that, this BMW one I've just bought looks like it's been remanufactured anyway. There's no part number on it, and it's got like some dodgy number. Looks like it's been stamped in by a kid. It looks a bit iffy, that doesn't it? <laughs> As opposed to the original, which seems to be a lot better. And actually, this is Valio marked, whereas this one is uh, is not marked anything. So it might be a more improved variant. I don't really know about that. I hope it's a more improved variant anyway. I really do. Seems a bit funny though, doesn't it? How like, when the engine's, this engine kind of is in the off position and that is locked inside. Maybe it's because the first time it works, I don't know. We just don't know, but look, it's actually, it actually does sometimes feels like it's sticking a bit there, that. Can you see that? It's It was sticking a minute ago, that. If you put a bit of sideways pressure on that, it definitely stuck. The it's sticking there, that. The. Now, to me, that could be the issue. Definitely intermittently sticking, is that? There, again. So, let's whack that one on and see what happens. You think about it, I mean, this is, uh, it's all plastic and it doesn't really inspire in me much confidence at all as a mechanism. You've got like a conventional ignition switch or ignition barrel type mechanism there on a worm screw. And you've got just a servo motor, what does that? Well, to me, it don't, I mean, it's all plastic, look at it. I mean, it really, to me, that does not inspire any, any form of confidence whatsoever. I mean, bearing in mind, it was 2005 made. The car is very old now, isn't it? It's what, 18 year old, is it? 2005, 15, 25, 18 year old car. So it's probably an 18 year old component, if not about that, or maybe a bit older, a bit younger. And it's probably done this a million times. So I can imagine there is some form of wear. So the axle's held in there with some sort of a, uh, Clevis cleft pin type thing. And you've got this motor assembler. And the whole thing is a bit like, in my opinion, ridiculous kind of thing. And that's basically all you have. You've got a small DC motor there. You buy these motors from China, they're very, very inexpensive. And I'm starting to think like, can I open this up and can I, uh, can I measure something? Can I check what's the carbon brushes like? Does it have brushes or is it brushless, you know? We just don't know, do we really? So it's, do you know what? Looking at that motor there now, which is a bit annoying, it's <laughs> it's literally just the same sort of motor as a door lock, isn't it? In my eyes, you could probably just put a door lock motor in that. But it, it just looks like a brushed motor to me. But it looks very black there, you know, in the inside. And I'm wondering, has it got some type of, um, some type of whir or is it burned or whatever and I'll tell you one thing I'm pretty sure looking at that I can just unbolt it there underneath 
It does look like it's been a bit warm, that. I'm not going to open the new one for obvious reasons because of the cost of it, but it's it's definitely something to think about, like, you know, what's going on kind of thing. It's really weird how it works. So basically, obviously it works and it just turns this device here, this bad boy, kind of thing. Probably now it's in the completely the wrong position. Actually, I need to open that, flip that in like that, see? Still working out how it works, really. It's always like a bit of a... There we are. So there you are, that's what it does. So the motor does that and goes in there. But for some reason, you can alter the length of this. It's all come apart now, look. I hope the new one works. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very interesting system, really. It's interesting, but it's kind of ridiculous sort of thing. I don't know why it has to be so complicated. If there were no such things as thieves, we'd be all right, wouldn't we? Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, like that. So that's how it works, basically, in, in, a, in a nutshell. Now we've got to see if the new one works. I must say it was quite difficult to get under here and start filming. I had to ditch the gimbal. There's the steering lock anyway. Probably that check could show messages that there's a steering lock issue. And that's where the lock segment goes in to lock it. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to whack it into those two screw holes there. And then we'll clear the fault counters. And hopefully it should be right as ninepence with a bit of lock. So I've just got to the point now where I've just put the shear bolts in with my fingers. But what I'm going to do is before I snap these shear bolt heads off, I'm just going to have a look at uh, the alignment and make sure it's all tickety-boo. Because I don't want to shear these off yet. So I'm going to just nip them up by hand with my fingers until I'm happy with it because I want to make sure the system's working. I'll just do them literally hand or finger tight. I mean, there's no movement in that unit now. So that might be all right, because I don't want to start messing about. If something goes wrong, then we're in a world of pain, aren't we, kind of thing. So this is the main connector. There's only four wires on it, really. There's two thick ones and two thin ones. Pins look all right. They don't look like they've been tampered with. Of course, we always have to check the pins, you know. Because if the pins aren't tight, you could lose comms with that. Actually, one of them does look like it's been someone's front probe, that, you know. We need to check that out before we do anything. And I'm damn sure that's okay. So, as I said, I want to do a drag test. And a drag test is literally, well, it's hanging in on its own. You just literally, just check it like that. And if it drags quite well got a good contact it's not brilliant but it's not you know it's got a good contact and bearing in mind this isn't really 100 percent the correct pin this is just a universal one so the real pins are probably a bit thicker and that's a drag test and that's all we need to do just to confirm it's quite a bit of force so they're probably all right then i mean they look quite reasonable but them two in the center they did look like they're possibly a bit wider than the others but on reflection with the zoom lens on the iphone they look, they look quite reasonable <clears throat> but these are the sort of things that can catch you out so you should always be on guard for stuff like this you don't know who's <laughs>